welcome to my channel Pharma Info with Shubhashish. Now today the same topic that means the one which you uh, might have gone through uh, in my last video, right? The combinatorial chemistry and all. So we are today, it, it is found to be the third session, right? In combinatorial chemistry, the topic. And uh, till now we have discussed uh, the various requirements, right? Uh, first and foremost, we have seen that what are the different branches of combinatorial chemistry. There we found that uh, you know, uh, parallel synthesis, at the same time, uh, you know, mix and split or mixed combinatorial synthesis, both the things are there. If we just try to, you know, classify them on the basis of the phase which is used, uh, which are used rather, they can be categorized into two types, that is one is your uh, solid phase, the other one is the solution phase, right, okay. So first we have taken the solid phase, uh, okay, the solid phase combinatorial chemistry. So there we found that uh, the essential requirements to run that particular, you know, uh, synthesis and all right okay so there we found that the first and foremost you have to deal with the you have to come up with the solid phase or the solid support in that we found the the, the use of this resin bits and all and we have seen that uh, so many scientists they developed so many you know bits and all the first it was uh, developed by Merrifield right then accordingly there was some problem with the Merrifield resin as well so for that very reason some other you know few more came into the picture or came into the Field, right those are you know uh, shepherd's polyamide resin dentagel resin trace all these things are there right and uh, after that we have seen not only you need uh, this uh, solid support you need uh, a linker right because it is the linker through which you can at least uh, uh, develop a bridge between the support at the same time the reagents which you are, you are going to use in the in, in different steps of the reaction right okay now, so linker, we have found that several linkers like your Brink resin, uh, then your Wang resin, then Barlow's resin, we have few more with us, we have so many linkers are there, but for this particular session, um, uh, we have discussed few, right? Okay, we have seen that, yes, the linker should have, a active fun should have an active functional group, right? Otherwise, it cannot form, it cannot link the starting material, right? Okay. Definitely the linker will not react with each and every step, every regions which are involved in that particular reaction But definitely the linker should uh, you know uh, initiate the process because the first region should made should make a connection to that particular linker and the connection is being made with the help of the functional group provided by the linker right okay so that is one of the thing the one of the essential thing right the linker with active functional group then we have seen that earlier when the combinatorial chemistry first came into the picture long back uh, 1990s and all so that time it was exclusively you know uh, used for the purpose of making peptides and all so that means uh, peptides is an event of uh, you know accumulation of so many or combining so many amino acids and we know that uh, the vulnerability the vulnerability of uh, both the c terminal as well as n terminal right so accordingly, the either of the terminal need to be protected, right? Be it in combinatorial chemistry or in conventional chemistry, right? Uh, while uh, when you are in peptide making and all, so that time the special caution, special precaution has to be taken, uh, so that we can at least uh, the the point where exactly we want the reaction to occur, that particular point need to be targeted, and rest will be, you know, rest will be eclipsed. I should not use the term called eclipsed, rather the protection need to be, you know. Made and all, right? Okay, so uh, likewise, um, um, be it uh, you know the amino acids or some non peptides, because nowadays uh, combinatorial chemistry has well been extended to in making the non peptides as well, right? So, accordingly, we have seen that uh, the protecting group, various protecting groups are of use, right? Especially in combinatorial chemistry, okay. And uh, so uh, the other requirement is found to be a protecting groups. And finally, um, the, as you are protecting the group, and we are not, yeah, and we are not expecting the protecting group should be there, should remain as such at the end of that particular show. It's not like that. So at a particular point of time, when as when you uh, when you require, okay, to that particular area be exposed at that time, the protecting group need to be deprotected, right? So as usual, uh, as we are using protecting groups, we need a deprotecting agent as well. And finally, uh, see, as uh, we are just running the reaction on a solid support and uh, by means of a bond, definitely. So that means at the end of the reaction, in order to get the product, you have to cleave the product, you have to separate the product from the solid support. And that is why you need a cleaving agent as well, right? So these are the essential requirements of solid phase uh, parallel synthesis, so solid phase combinatorial chemistry and all, right? Chalo. 
Now let us move on, right? Now we'll discuss that what are the different methods which are used in solid phase uh, combinatorial chemistry. As I said uh, earlier that uh, if we just look back to that classification of combinatorial chemistry, there we found parallel synthesis. So the funda behind parallel is, you yes, definitely you can come up with so many compounds at a time, but in each and every reacting vessel, there is a formation of a single product. Okay, that is for, that is for solid phase or parallel parallel combinatorial chemistry or parallel combinatorial synthesis whereas in case of mixed combinatorial synthesis okay this particular thing won't be there will not be there rather in a single vessel in a single flask you can find so many compounds has been found right and which is more often found in case of solution phase synthesis so in case of solution phase synthesis there is every chance that you can come up with multiple compounds and that too in a single vessel what my point right Chalo. So now let us move on to the, 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 the methods, right? So earlier two methods were used. Uh, we are dealing with the methods which are used in making what? Uh, so many peptides and all, right? So many peptides and all. And that means the methods which are used in combinatorial synthesis. So one proposed by uh, the scientist called Houghton. Houghton's tea bag process. Tea bag process. Okay, these are found to be the methods, right? The methods which are involved, which are used, uh, which are used in uh, uh, combinatorial chemistry and all, right? Okay, so Houghton's tea bag process, and the second one is your mix and split method, right? Mix and split method. So here, this is for what? This is for <coughs> this is for solid phase parallel synthesis. That means where instead of getting all the products in a single vessel you are supposed to get multiple compounds in multiple vessel that means each vessel should contain a single product this is how to steal process but whereas in this case mix and split method in a single vessel you can you can find multiple products has been found right Chalo, have been found now so let us deal with them one by one in short right so what is that how to steal process right how to steal process what exactly we are doing now, if we just try to, if we just try to give it a, an acronym, I'll just, uh, you know, call it as HTB. In short, right? In short, for our convenience of presentation or discussion and all, HTB. Okay, how to steal process. So how it operates actually. So here initially, what they are, they are just taking a polystyrene container, right? They're just taking polystyrene container. And container is found to be something like this in which so many you know networks are there that means instead of calling it as container we can also call it as polystyrene mesh this is of this shot right in which they are just embedding they are just embedding what the solid support this is found to be the support material or in other words other word the resin bit resin bit right okay now as we know that on top of this resin bit you have to put a linker right okay it is the linker which should provide the active functional group so that means the bit should have bit should have a linker in it assume key the bit is having wang resin in it so what kind of functional group that we can expect here wang resin for hydroxyl right so like and it, and the whole mesh the whole mesh they are just considering it as a p bag and which is given a code which is given a code why because we have to take so many tea bags like this like this right now what next now what next now each and every mesh now it is kept in a vessel polyethylene vessel right so I assume that we have with us 150 vessel in which 150 tea bags are there right because in the very beginning what i told that this is exclusively you know used for the making of peptides obviously peptides in which each and every product should form in a single vessel so that means what we can expect we can expect 150 bottles because we are hunt we are in the hunt of making 150 peptides right assume ki dipeptides right Chalo. So in that case, that means one tea bag can hold a particular reagent, 
and on top of it we are just adding another reagent so both the reagents are found to be nothing but terbene acids because we are in the process of making dipeptide right chalo so that means one mesh one p bag in which the solid support that means the resin bed is embedded right and then on top of it we are just putting what we are just derivatizing the bed by providing by just uh, you know putting a hydroxyl group hydroxyl group coming from wang resin so that means the bed is there along with the linker okay chalo so now we have with us 150 bottles right we have with us 150 bottles right now what next now what next we are adding now we are in each and every bottle we are adding what in each and every bottle we are adding suppose we have with us 150 bottle so it goes on like this i am not a very uh, i am not a good painter it seems right so you have to bear with me i don't know whether it is a bottle or not right but anyway it looks like this only so it goes on like this and each and every bit every bottle we have a mesh right we have a polystyrene mesh like this like this like this in which resin bed along with the linker is there right okay now what next we have to add the amino acid here a1 here also a1 in each bottle we have to add amino acid right okay so the amino acid now so what happens suppose ki we have a linker is having so this is found to be the bed in which a linker is attached right the linker is providing what a hydroxyl group so definitely this will accept what the c terminal of amino acid to assume ki after adding the amino acid as glycine so the glycine will form an ester bond or ester linkage with it and become some became something like this why have written nh f mark as i told in my last video that a protecting group need to be attached to the n terminal in order to make it non responsive towards the external stimuli followed chalo so now there is a formation of something like this what next next you have to take out each and every tea bags from each and every bottles that means now i am just taking out all the 150 tea bags which are having 150 which are having amino acids linked to them right now what next after taking them out i just go for washing washing up excess reagent at the same time deep protection so that means in a sink uh, where it is being taken place in a common vessel why because assuming that each and every resin bed is found to is not supposed to react with the other bed why because they are inert in nature as they are polymeric in nature there is a less chance of cross reaction so that means they are found to be physically separated right so that is why that is why so now in the in this particular common vessel the communal the communal washing and deep protection why what for deep protection is needed because we the because we are in the process of our aim is to make dipeptide dipeptide that too in each bottle right so that means another second amino acid need to be incorporated now we need to provide we need to provide the accommodation for to this second amino acid that means it has to get accommodated no so how this accommodation is possible until and unless this will not uh this will not uh, become free so what will happen the second amino acid will not find any point to get attached so that means washing for removing of the extra reagents in order to you know hasten up the reaction sometimes in solid phase synthesis they are just using excess reagent assuming that the excess reagent will not interfere in the process of the reaction only thing is that the excess region can drive the reaction into completion in a faster way than that of a low loading right chalo so now nhf mark so what what in in this common vessel we now we have with us 150 what 150 tea bags which are having a single amino acid in it right now what next next is washing and washing and subsequently deep protection with which we are going to do the deep protection f mock fluorinyl methoxy carbonyl can be removed from the n terminal by using pyperidine so pyperidine is found to be the reagent which can deep protect the n terminal it because it is having the ability because f mock is not that much highly reactive so that means 
we need a mild deprotecting agent. So here we are using pipiridine for the purpose of deprotection because all are having FMA. So now we are done with what deprotection. So what now? Once this will get deprotected again, we have to put because each and every tea deck we have given a code. So accordingly, each and every tea deck has been replaced in their respective bottles. Now again it came here. Okay, they are occupying their respective bottles and all. So what next? Next we have to add the second amino acid. That means A2. A2, right? So A2, after adding A2, what will happen to this area? What will happen to this end? Let's see. What will happen to this end? So definitely, so here, the first amino acid can provide the NH2. That means N terminal. So what next? Uh, that means once the second amino acid will approach it, the C terminal of the second amino acid will get will be involved, right? So the C terminal. So with the help of this, so it will take the C, it will take the help from the C terminal to form a form a peptide linkage, and, and finally we have got something like this NH F more. right? So what next? Again, we need to bring bring them back into the common vessel for the washing as well as, as, well as deep production. Why? Because though we have got the dipeptide, though we have got the dipeptide, but the end terminal still hold what? Still hold the protecting group with it. And the protecting group need to be deep protected because in the final form or in the final product, we are not expecting the unwanted stuff to be present. So that is why the deep protection need to be done. Okay. So we are done with washing, we are done with deep protection. What next? We need to separate, no. We need to separate what? We need to separate the dipeptide from the mesh, which is having, which is holding, in which the resin bit is embedded. Right? So that means the separation. That means we need to separate them. That means we need a cleaving agent. The cleaving operation is, is done. In the, in the common vessel only. So we need a cleaving agent as TFA. So here TFA is found to be the cleaving agent with which the cleaving operation will take place. And finally, you are going to get what? Peptides. Of your interest, of your as per your desire, you have got peptides. How many? 150. So how to TDAC process can generate 150 peptides at a time. And during the process, definitely you are not supposed to get each and every peptide in a single vessel. Instead, each and every vessel should hold the different peptide. Got my point? So this is an example of the first branch that is uh, your uh, the parallel solid phase or parallel combinatorial chemistry, or combinatorial synthesis, right? Okay. So with that, we are done with the first one. Now we'll move to the next one. That is your, uh, the second process that is <clears throat> the mix and split method, right? So in mix, mix and split method, this is an example of what this is, or this can produce multiple compounds and that too in a single vessel. That too in a single vessel. Now how this can be operated, this, this fine. Let's see that what will happen, what, what exactly they are doing in, 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 in this case, mix and split method, right? As I told that the mix and, through mix and split method, we can get multiple products in a common vessel, in a single vessel, right? So that is why, suppose ki, uh, we have with us only three amino acids, right? Three amino acids. Suppose ki, the simple one like your glycine, then your um, alanine, then your glycine, alanine and uh, tyrosine, right? Okay, chal. Tyrosine. Do you know, glycine can also be represented with the help of G. Alanine, A. Tyrosine, T. Here we went wrong. Somewhere we went wrong because tyrosine cannot be represented with T. Now why why I'm using this kind of things and all? Is it not irrelevant? Does it make any sense? I have written here glycine, okay. We are damn satisfied with this glycine. But why unnecessarily I am bringing, bringing this single letter uh, representation? Why I am representing this amino acid uh, in a single letter. Why? Yes. See, as we are dealing with uh, uh, you know drug discovery, we should not stick to combinatorial chemistry. We have another you know facets, another facet like your drug design or in silico drug design. There we have to deal with the protein. If we just read, if we want to read the structure, if we want to read the linear sequence of the protein, it can be represented in this form. 
it can be represented in this form as well if you just try to you know figure out or read the faster sequence of a protein you won't find the three letter representation of amino acid rather you should find a single letter representation now why i stuck here i got stuck here why tyrosine cannot be represented with t because we have a natural amino acid that also starts with t that is threonine so it is the threonine that has taken this particular letter so that is why you are not supposed to use the t again for this tyrosine so instead the tyrosine can be represented by or represented with y right okay i strongly recommend or suggest you or uh, yes recommend you that please by heart this single letter representation because we have only 20 amino acids only 20 amino acids if you can remember 50 you know elements in the periodic table or 118 elements in the periodic table why not 20 amino acids and that to single letter you can right chalo now let's move on so what exactly we are doing in uh, mix and split method right mix and split method so as i told that we have taken uh, you know three amino acids glycine alanine and tyrosine right okay chalo so now with this three amino acids we are being assigned to make uh, 27 tripeptides so we are being assigned to make 27 tripeptides with the help of this three amino acid is it possible yes the 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 the, the, the the statistic says yes uh, we can come up with 27 tripeptides with this three right Chalo. now if we stick to the conventional process or the traditional approach or traditional organic chemistry definitely it will take uh, say so many days to come up with this uh, to fulfill the project right to meet the challenge right but while opting the combinatorial concept and all, definitely we don't have to spend uh, a lot of time, right, in making this 27 tripeptides. Instead, we can just, uh, you know, wind it up in, uh, in one to two days, even in few hours as well, right? How is it possible? Let's see. So now, first and foremost, as we are, you know, uh, we, are, we are opting the combinatorial concept. So that means the concept is, and that too, we are opting parallel, solid parallel synthesis. So in that case, First and foremost, you have to link it, link each and every amino acid with the support material by means of a linker, right? So now this is found to be the bed. This is found to be the linker, assume, provided the functional group to the amino acid and straightway we are just putting glycine here. So this is found to be the eligible candidate to be thrown into combinatorial synthesis until and unless you are not fixing the starting material to the solid support by means of a linker, it's not possible to introduce it into the combinatorial medium. What my point? Hmm? Chalo. Let's move on, right? So same thing happens to here also. We need to give the, give, uh, give the alanine as well as tyrosine the shape which we have given to this glycine, right? So now, let's just make it more simple, right? It has become more clumsy, it seems, right? Now, let's see. So as we have just come to know that uh, glycine for uh, G for glycine, then A for alanine and Y for tyrosine. So likewise, uh, so we just uh, put like this. So this is found to be the bed. We have a linker and we just put here G, right? Now again, this is for uh, alanine. We'll just put A and here this is for tyrosine. We'll just put Y, right? Not small Y, capital Y. I have written here small Y, no problem. Please bear with me, right? Chalo. So now what next? what next you have to take it initially you have to take it in a common vessel take a common vessel because there is no chance of cross reaction why because they are attached to a particular support which is inert in nature no question of cross reaction even though there is a chance of cross reaction that can be avoided by you know opting a low loading at least if we just uh, you know try up the process with uh, a low loading Suppose like a nanomole or picomole basis, right? Definitely we can avoid the chance of cross reaction. But in very, um, uh, see, it is not found to be uh, uh, occurring frequently, right? In a rarest of rare case, there may be a chance of cross reaction. If, 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 if the synthesis involves the making of peptides and all, right? Chalo. So now we have with us this three amino acid. We have taken it in a, you know, that means we have mixed them all together. Then, the title says mix and split 
That means the moment you are done with the mixing, then you have to split this mixture into three equal mixture. So that means now we have three vessel and all are having the same composition like this. G, A, Y. Right? Here is the same thing like, uh, you know, G, A and Y. Right? So now we have with us three equal mixture. So we have initially we have mixed them all together. Then we have just split the mixture into three equal mixture. Now we have got with us, we have with us three equal mixture of what? Three amino acids. So what next? You have to introduce the second amino acid because your mission is to generate tripeptides and that two of 27 tripeptides from three amino acids. So now what next? Next you have to introduce what? Introduce the amino acid into each vessel. Suppose key here I am just willing to introduce glycine, here I am willing to introduce alanine and here I am willing to introduce Y, tyrosine, right? So what will happen? What will happen? So definitely what we can expect here? The moment glycine is attached, glycine is poured into this medium, what will happen? There is a formation of GG, here it is AG and here it is YG. So we have got what? We have got what? We have got three dipeptide. Opting the conventional process, three times we have to repeat the reaction. But here, simply adding an amino acid in a mixture which is holding three uh, no, uh, no, amino acids and we have got three different combination GG, AG and YG. Here is the same thing. It's GA, it's A and it's YA. And here it is GY, sorry, GY. A Y and Y Y, right? So now what next? Next is, so we are done with what the making of dipeptides. Now what next? Now you have to take, you have to mix them all together. So what all the dipeptides that you have made just now, you have to mix them all together. So how is it possible? Like this. So like this, we have got, we have just. You know, brought them in a single vessel. Now, in a single vessel, we have with us nine dipeptide. Nine dipeptides are there. So, what next? We have mixed them all together. Then we have to split them into three equal mixture. So, we have with us three, one, two, three. So, this is holding nine. The same, the same uh, combination is there in the second vessel, and the same combination is there in the third vessel. So now we have with us 27 dipeptides. 27 dipeptides. 9, 9 and 9. 27, right? We are approaching, we are heading towards uh, our goal and all, right? So now what next? Introduce the third amino acid. Third amino acid. So in the first mixture, in the first vessel, which is holding, you know, 9 dipeptides, I'm just adding the second amino acid, the, the one amino acid like your, uh, say, alanine, right? So here in the second vessel, I'm just uh, adding uh, tyrosine and the third vessel, I'm adding what? Alanine, right? Because there is a constraint in the selection of our, uh, this amino acid. You have been given what? You have been given only three amino acids and you are being assigned, you have been assigned with what? 27 tripeptides with this three amino acid only. So that means we cannot go beyond this. We have only three, no? With this three only, we have to play the game and all, right? Chalo. So now what next? So what can be expected from here? So here, what can be expected? After adding this A, so what will happen to this? This will, this will be reshaped into GGA. This will be reshaped into AGA. This one is YGA. Same thing here also, GAA, triple A, YAA, here also. Uh, you know, here we have added A, G, Y, A. Now, no, no longer it is in the three different vessel, right? It is a common vessel. You have to remember it, right? And then it is Y, A, Y, Y, A. So, we are done with what? Nine tripeptides. Here also same thing, nine. Terminal will be Y. Here also the third amino acid will be alanine, right? Sorry. Uh, y A this is G right G because we have we are we are left with G that is why G has to be incorporated so here the third amino acid will be tyrosine and here the third amino acid will be glycine so with that now you just mix them all together we have with us in the common vessel 27 tripeptides so we are done with what mix and split 
makes sense click method so this is how it is operated now now uh, so with that we are done with what the making of what 27 tripeptides and all are kept in a single vessel that is the fundamental of what makes sense split combinatorial synthesis or chemistry right so with that we are done with what with that we are done with the methods which are used in combinatorial synthesis right right in my next video i'll come up with we have made so many compounds but there must be some mean by which 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 can we can elucidate the structure of all these compounds and all right we look up to it in my next video so stay tuned till then thank you very much